91.5 FM, WUML, Lowell, Pete Lavender, and Limbo Souls right there. We turn back time off of the Sugar CD. And now my voice is going to the recording. I was going to look at all the buttons when I come in here and uh, make sure everything's pressed so that, uh, so that all the signal is going where it's supposed to be. But Pete Lavender and Limbo Souls right there. We turn back time off of Sugar before that one. It was Marty Nestor and the Blackjacks with Saint of the Highway off of his Live at the Bull Run CD and sitting across from me is a man who knows a thing or two about both of those records. You can hear his guitar styling found there. The one and only, the man, the legend, Mr. <laughs> Carl Johnson. What's happening, Carl? Good to see you, Mike. <laughs> you know what? I was saying, and, and I'm giving you the, the, the huge build up here, but oh, God. it's funny. I, I was just running down in my head Sort of the uh, the unofficial tally of the amount of projects that you have played guitar on that I have played on this show, and it's it's vast, it's large. Okay. It, both of those, <laughs> plus uh, Pete Lavender's previous uh, record, which uh, uh, I have spun on here a lot, but also uh, you, of course, were the mainstay guitar player for Jen Carney and the Lost Onion for quite some time. Uh, yep, I did my, did my time there as well. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And in addition to that, many, many other projects around, including, but not limited to, Big Trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which I know you guys shut down uh, the street over by Heinz's just a couple weeks ago. Uh, how, how did that go? The, uh, the oh, annual, it's always fun. The annual Heinz it, road it's, race with it's, Big Trouble. It's always fun getting together with those guys. We've been uh, making trouble for some 15 years now and I, I hope it goes on for a long time <laughs> they have a lot of fun <laughs> absolutely but so but i want to focus on on the, uh, the two bands that i that we just played marty nestor and the blackjacks that one live at the bull yeah. i've played that one on on this uh show a lot since it just came out and the material a lot of the material on there was from marty's uh, saint of the highway cd which i we were playing on here on uh, the album version before it came out marty actually yes. brought the band in and played here, but yep. that CD you jumped in with the band after, yeah, but yeah. for the live record. So right, after, right, after right. the original record, but on it's kind of like Skinner there in the <laughs> mid seventies, yeah. The <laughs> but so, but so now you're you're like an official member. Of the uh, yeah, Black I guess Jack. so. Yeah, I guess I'm a, I am a Blackjack now and with uh, uh, Jeff Root and, yeah. uh, and Boyd Marty and, and Marty. And, yeah, uh, great group of guys. Great, really great batch of songs and. Um, well, it comes, it, it jumps right out of the speakers on that Live at the Bull Run CD. Thank you, it was a good night. And uh, and and absolutely, like you were saying, we were saying off air, kind of right in your, your sort of ultimate comfort zone. Yeah, right in my wheel well. In terms of uh, of, of being the, the lead guitar, right? Yeah, uh, stylistically, Marty's songs fit right into a style I really enjoy playing, that whole kind of country rock style a lot of bends a lot of you know singing single note stuff and uh very melodic playing stuff I, I really enjoy playing and when i heard marty's cd i was listening to it going boy that could be me playing a lot of those parts that his previous guitar player had a very similar style to, to mine doug Vinard, yeah yeah mistaken. great great player Absolutely. and uh that's definitely one side of my playing that I, I really enjoy, and I don't get to do quite that much. So uh, when when the opportunity came up, I was happy to kind of help him up. Absolutely, up step in. The song that we came out of that set with, "Turn Back Time," off the uh, off the Pete Lavender and the Limbo Souls CD, "Sugar." Now you have been a Limbo Soul since oh, wow. since the Souls were yeah. sort of condemned yeah. Limbo uh, by yeah. Pete Lav, right? Or, yes, yes. Or conscripted to the uh, Limbo status. Yes, right? from the. Um, Confederacy of Dunces book, I believe, is, is where the term he he brought it up, and I I was familiar with it as well, and I, I loved it. So yeah, we the Limbo Souls. It's it's that that band has also grown from uh, Peter's more um, well it, singer songwriter rock stuff earlier to now more of a kind of soul, 70s soulful vibe. Pete, Pete Pete is a guy with a long a long career yeah. and a deep catalog, but the last Absolutely. certainly the last two records it's been billed as yeah. the Limbo Soul. So yeah, it's, band it, records. It, it's a move to the uh, to the band mm -hmm. record. Thing. Yeah, yeah, we all definitely he's a fantastic songwriter and writes very complete songs with lots of chords and really really well thought out songs, but he also leaves a lot of space for everyone to come up with their own parts within the structure. 
which I really like. Yeah, and, uh, and I should mention that between from uh, from his last record to the to this one, Sugar, that that Spacey leaves for the parts. You guys have 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 really taken that angle and run with it with the Limbo Soul thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of parts I think so. on the Sugar record, and that. Uh, not in small part due to the fact that this is uh, this record was fully produced by you, right? Yeah, yeah, it was completely homegrown. Um, didn't really plan on it being that way. We just kind of started doing some pre-production, laying out the songs in my modest home studio, and uh, just just kept working things out and kept kind of saying, "Well, we'll keep doing this until." We kind of hit the glass ceiling that our, you know the studio will allow us to do, and uh, everything just it fit the style of the music. It sounded good. It sounded right for what we we're doing. And we didn't notice like ah that doesn't sound good enough. And uh, with Peter's blessing, we just kept moving forward with it. And uh, it, you know it took a while. It was over a year in the making, but we took our time and, and we really had a lot of fun. Well, that's that, that's one of the the blessings of being able to yeah. to have that kind of control and do it yourself. It can also be the double-edged sword as an yeah. artist, <laughs> yes. because you know there's there's that there's that that really really beautiful thing about knowing that there's yes. a deadline that you have yeah. to meet. Sometimes you got to kind of forces the decision, right. the creative decision. Sometimes, right? yeah. After a while, it it became like, all right, I think I think we got to let this one go. We right. gotta it, it's it's been done for a while now. We got to stop. We just got to say it's done and, and get out and play it live. Well, and and that has been a great thing. Uh, you have gotten out and. Done on a few real big shows yeah. with Olympus Souls, not yep. not the least of which is one just a few weeks ago yes. at Chelmsford at yep. the uh, Center of the Arts, a, a sort of a brand new venue. Yeah, that was great. That went that went very well for us. We had the full ten or eleven piece band do, and we did the whole entire album uh, in order, which has been a lot of fun. You know, when we can out uh, the backup singers and percussion and horns yeah. and all that, which is and what's on the album. Fantastic, uh, especially for for a local musician, mm -hmm. instead of, and with a homegrown project. To be able to have a place to take it out yeah. and really do it like that. Yeah, and that was a surprise. I, I had never, I only live right down the street from there just about, and uh, I had never even been in there. Drove by it a million times, but um, what a great space. So we yeah. hope, to, hope to do that again with, with the full band. It was a nice stage. It was, everyone was friendly. I think it was for what we were playing too. It was a, a really good venue for it. It was comfortable. Absolutely. And speaking of venues, both of those projects yes. are going to be showcased <laughs> tonight. A very opportunistic uh, uh, way to way to mention it uh, right here in Lowell over at Torba Music Hall. Yes. And you will be doing double duty, but True. in fact, <laughs> in fact, the the, the real big that's scene not enough. Here, and, and for, for people who who are, who are following what, what I'm putting down here, Carl is a very a very prodigious individual. But uh, but he's also a super creative individual, and and he sort of is a little too humble sometimes, I think. But tonight is the is the big debut of the brand new project, the Carl Johnson uh, epic sort of I don't know a back to the sandbox guitar yeah, yeah. Uh, tone junkie uh -huh. like catnip type <laughs> thing with the band Murdoch. Is this is this a, a uh, debut live? This is the first time anyone, yeah, we've never played live. Um, this is our first show and our CD release. Uh, it, yeah, it grew out of basically, I, I found that all of a sudden I had spent the last 10 years playing guitar for all these other people and doing all these other projects, but I hadn't really, other than a couple home spun, you know, things where I played all the instruments and stuff, but I hadn't really focused on my my own thing in quite a while, and uh, the time was just right. I really felt um, I had some unfinished business with some old songs that I played like one time back in the 90s. I found this old videotape and I, I forgot these songs even existed, and yeah. so it, so it was time to finish those up and write a new batch. And to take the uh, take the instrument of choice and yeah. really see what you can get and out of it. And do some stuff I hadn't done in a while. I still wanted to scratch that itch, the heavier heavier stuff. So. Absolutely. Well, let's scratch it a little bit right, All right. now. We're going to jump into one. This might be one of those tracks that have been kicking around for a while. It's mm -hmm. called Strange Bird, mm -hmm. off of the new Murdoch CD. Carl Johnson's in studio. It's almost acoustic. <laughs> A little electric. Not quite. <laughs> w U M L O. Ninety one point five FM. W U M L O. Strange bird, right there. Murdoch. The 
epic project <laughs> from the man across the the desk from me right now, Mr. Carl Johnson. Uh, and uh, and uh, 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 just if people were, if people tuned in for a little bluegrass this morning, they just <laughs> they just got a little a, a little jolt of uh, espresso in the yeah, coffee. Yeah, right? you could do that as a bluegrass though. It would definitely it's in there. Or 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 like an old timey blues, which is as we were saying, yeah. the first time I ever heard that, it was uh, yeah. Like, uh, a very simple recording that you did a, a few years back. Yeah, I think it, I saw on a Reverb Nation. Yeah, it was originally the idea was a, as a blues song on an open tune resonator guitar, but that's how I played it. But I still always heard this version right. <laughs> in my head with yeah. that big, big kick drum. And it's funny, and the kick drum is there, particularly uh -huh. on that one. And I mentioned. The drummer there, Mr. Justin Bolio. Yep. Of course, I mentioned because I have seen him play. He plays with Pete Lavender. He plays mm -hmm. with with a lot of different people. That I've seen a phenomenal drummer. I said yeah. I'd never heard him play so hard. Yeah. And then you told me a little a little inside info on this. Yeah. Your your original musical he, collaborator. He is, Mr. He is my Bolio. my partner in crime for uh, I, dare I say thirty plus years Just now. Going back we, to the uh, we learned to the play years. Yeah. Before yeah. anybody ever heard that. Yeah. It was is <laughs> my, myself my. My friend Larky and Justin started out together, and uh, and uh, we took Justin and I took a, some years off there in the middle. But we uh, he 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 got back into the game about ten years ago, and uh, we've done a whole bunch of stuff since then. So it, it's just wonderful to play with them. Sometimes we both will have these moments where we're back in his bedroom of his condo when we were thirteen and. He'll do something and I'll do something and it's something we did all those years ago. We'll look at each other and just laugh, you know. It's it's just hilarious. So it, it's it's great having him back there. It, yeah, it makes me very happy to be playing with him again. <laughs> Absolutely, and and I was I was noticing this about after just getting the record this week, listening to it through a few times. It seems like for for like a guitar player like yourself, this this sort of heart, this material harkens back to those early sounds yeah. that first drew you yeah, to the electric guitar. Yeah, but uh, you you were telling me sort of like those those sounds that you wanted to make back then, but but were uh, really able to achieve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I grew up. My I have an older brother, and and his record collection is what I cut my teeth on, and that was you know definitely Zeppelin and Sabbath and Grand Funk and Pink Floyd and all, just all that classic stuff. And uh, and I initially doing my original music. In my old band, the Blue Rider Band, back in the, the 90s, I wanted it to sound like this record sounds, but I just wasn't didn't know how to get all those sounds, and we didn't have, it wasn't as easy to figure out how to do it. You can only get so much information from the back of a record. Right. From, you there, know, was no, there was no yeah, how-to YouTube. Yeah, so it's taken another days. 20 years to figure out that stuff, and then learn how to actually right. figure out how to capture it onto you know a recording medium. But... But yeah, I, I, I think I did it. <laughs> and as, you, as you said, these these are not studio creations. The, the recording process on this one was like basically a song a week, and these are basically yeah. recorded sort of live, live to tape, right? Yeah, yeah, we did it again all at my house, and um, we 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 purposely set some rules. Said you know we'll we'll get the song down, we'll run through it a few times, two or three takes, and then I'll take it and I'll you know I'll add what needs to be added, but but. For the most part, I'll have a mix within a week, and then that's it. I'm not gonna keep going back and going back. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, and I wanted to keep it raw. I wanted it to really feel like, you know, those old albums, and not, you know, not sound super slick. I wanted it to really seem like kind of three guys in a room, and all the rhythm tracks on it. That that's what it is. To have that uh, uh, that classic analog yeah. rock feel. Yeah. But to be able to have the freedom to do it digitally, it does yeah. take. It takes a lot of passion. It takes a lot of skill. And you. Our person who absolutely is uh, is all about that. You are sort of like the the, the most uh, gear fanatic person I know. In <laughs> yeah. fact, you you create guitars out of out of objects that yeah. weren't necessarily guitars <laughs> before, and that's uh, one of the things that you spend a lot of your time doing with with Carl's custom guitars. Right? Yeah, yeah. I um, I'll, well, along with learning how to play, I always paralleled that with needing to understand how everything works. So I was always taking the guitars apart, and taking the amps apart, taking everything apart. It wasn't enough to just learn how to play it. I, I needed to know how everything worked. Right. So so my my kind of career, my business has grown, uh, paralleled my kind of musical endeavors in that uh, I've, as I figured things out and maybe made something for myself 
Well, then along came the internet and eBay and all these things, and I would put one for sale. And that just kind of picked up and turned into a business. So yeah, I have Carl's Custom Guitars and uh, everything that I use to play live, I sell and you know, the, the cigar box guitars, lots of custom guitars, pedals, speaker cabinets, it's just a, yeah. It, it's, I, it all grew out of stuff that I use myself. Yeah, I, I gotta ask, as a, as a sort of as a sort of tone junkie guitar player, <laughs> it's gotta be great when you can sort of like add to your own sort of personal arsenal of, of gear by taking something that's yeah. not necessarily 100% there yet and, and right, bringing right. it to where where it needs to be to make those. Things. Yeah, it's cool. It, it's 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 nice to just be able to do that, and it's also nice for it's satisfying work because I do I get to for a lot of me, local musicians and stuff. I also just do you know general service and setup and maintenance and. So I know there's a lot of people out there who bring me instruments that maybe they had given up on and they, you know, they, they, oh, this thing's been sitting in my closet for 12 years. It's, it's no good. It's broken. It's, and no, well, no, it's not. It just needs this. Just needs, to me, it's simple, you know, but so I, I get, a, I do a lot of that stuff as well too. And, and that's good. And, and, and also I, it keeps all my own old crap kind of still working <laughs> absolutely because i do like all the old gear there's nothing like the sound of yeah. that gibson through the marshall right? yeah exactly and that's what i'll be playing tonight <laughs> absolutely and we will dip into a little bit more of that we're going to jump into one that, that as soon as it hit my ear it, it sort of made me it made me think of like the the old school bond scott era acdc uh, that's but yeah. then on a few more listens i started to hear some more mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that in a minute this okay. is a great little track called and I want to get it right. Death Threat Raygun. <laughs> right here on Almost Acoustic. It's Murdoch. Carl Johnson's in the studio. W U M L O. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> 91.5 FM W U M L O. I got to use the uh, the rock radio voice. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Johnson in studio with me while I was like, it is almost acoustic. Do not adjust your oh, radio, yeah. dials, yeah, 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 yeah. ladies and gentlemen. We have Dave Ewing. The brand new stuff by Carl <laughs> Johnson. The band's called Murdoch. The album is called Murdoch. That track was Death Threat Ray Gun. <laughs> a little piece of something that could become a much larger opus. Yeah, yeah, who knows? At some point. Who knows? And I was saying, kind of, the uh, the, 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 the sonic signature, it first screams ACDC. Yeah, but then, definitely. <laughs> lyrically, we go out into yeah. like Black Sabbath territory. Yeah, yeah, it, does, territory. it, it takes a sci fi turn. You think, oh, here's a, there, this is going to be right in the ACDC vein, almost, but it, it goes, it takes a left turn there lyrically. You and, can almost see the sort of the cartoons. Yeah, it would, it would really, if, if, if there are any illustrators out there who are interested <laughs> that would make a really great cartoon character so yeah death threat ray gun the intergalactic hitman <laughs> absolutely absolutely carl johnson's been my guest actually everything we've been playing for like the last half hour is uh, tracks carl Jeepers. johnson's playing guitar on <laughs> which is which is a phenomenal thing i think it's a, it's a beautiful thing and i should I, I would i would be remiss if i didn't mention that returning to the Hallowed Hall, you, you're an alum of the uh, of I am. university yes, here, yes, right? my alma mater, yes, it's nice to be here. It's Absolutely. changed a little bit, but uh, but this place is still the same. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. And now, so were you, were, you a, were you a music major? No, no, I was a business business major and uh, economics uh, minor, I believe. Like, yeah, it's, it's been a while, but yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I went for the safe, you know, Music, I, could, I did. I was doing music, and I said, I don't really need it's anybody to teach though, me how to do music. For what we've been talking about, and all the bands you've played in, and the success you've yeah. had in music, as well as your business uh, around instruments and, and, and gear. It, yeah. It's very funny how, it, you know, no matter what, it's sort of your passion's going to dictate right. where you end up, you one just way let, or the other. Yeah, right? if, you, if you stay out of the way and... and you know, you, you take care of the things that you need to know and need to learn, and then you just kind of follow what you like. And if you're really passionate about it, you should be able to figure out a way to to make money from it. And I knew I wasn't ever going to make money as a performer or a writer or just a guitar player or anything like that. And I knew if I tried to make money, I might lose the passion for it. So I never really, that was never something I tried to do. I always... No, I'll, I'm gonna keep my, my business separate from my music, but my business is also based on my music, or on music, yeah. and guitars, and so it's worked out pretty and well for me. It's good to be in a place where it's, it's you, you like to live, 
and it's it's not too it's not too hard to sort of like yeah. you know make it all work right in, in yeah a it really spot. isn't it, it's like taken it's taken a while but yeah and and yeah exactly and with the internet being what it is as far as my my business stuff and the music now too it's so easy to share stuff and it's so easy to find customers and so easy the fact that we can record music and shoot videos and do oh, everything yeah. and and put it out there off our phone nowadays for the whole world to see it's incredible. It's just a, it's it's a kind of like good time to be alive. <laughs> the, the tools have, have gone right into the hands of the people. Yeah, absolutely. And it and it is. It's it's up to you to sort of like follow your passion and discipline. And you, you are one who has has done that. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's amazing to me that you weren't uh, a graduate of the music school here because yeah. I've been watching you play guitar <laughs> for, and I don't want to date either of us, but for <laughs> over twenty years I've been yeah. a fan of your guitar playing, and I just kind of always assumed that you were a music. No, major. no, I have no no formal training whatsoever I just uh, I started well, I took a few lessons I think when I was like 11 or 12 and like the twinkle twinkle little star but I did yeah I didn't stick with it too long and um, now I just learned by playing and stuff I liked I, I figured out my own way to do it and and always just kind of more so just wanted to come up with my own voice my own unique blend of everything I liked and, you know, Absolutely. Carl Johnson is my guest. Murdoch's the new record. Yes. But there's a three for show tonight. Absolutely. Musical. If people want to want to stay following you, Carl, what, what's the best way for people to follow oh, everything can, that's going on with Tingsboro, Carl Johnson? Yeah, they can <laughs> find um, my music page on Facebook. Um, I am also have the, a Reverb Nation page with all the music, which is uh, ReverbNation.com slash Carl Johnson. And if you um, and if you if you Gibson's out of shape, just Google uh, Carl's Custom yeah, Guitars. www.carlscustomguitars.com. You can eat. contact me through there as well. And yeah, all sorts of all the stuff I make and sell is on there. Off to the rest. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We're gonna roll out with one more. <laughs> all right. Keep the cowboy theme going with Marty and the Blackjack. Yeah. This is one, and I was telling you, I don't want you to get a swelled head, but <laughs> one of the few tracks I played on here that is elicited unsolicited phone calls. From guitar fans, and it's uh, it's Martin Nestor and the Blackjacks. It's his rendition of Dead Flowers. Carl Johnson feature. Carl, we'll be looking for you tonight, and uh, so glad to have you in, man. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. It is ninety one five W U M L Low, almost acoustic. Your friends on the low end. <laughs> yeah.